Hey everyone, Jeremy here from Flatware Creations. I just wanted to show you some of the tools. I had a request for um, the rotary tools and um, kind of what I use. Um, so here's a few things. Um, I have my my board here I made to kind of protect from the grindings and the buffing compound and stuff. Um, it saves most of it, but I double it as a uh, holder for all of my diamond bits. This is my drum sanding bit. Um, I have different grits, 80, 120, and 180. Uh, most of what I use is the 180. It's a lot finer grit. Um, I do use a lot of the 120 for a lot of the rougher um, work, like getting off the uh, the flashing from drilling the holes. I'll use those. And then whenever I'm doing the, fi the finish work, getting out some of the tool marks and things like that, I'll use the 180. And then I'll switch over to these guys which are, let's see, uh, these are, I forget what they're called. Uh, they're just brushes, basically. The, the grit is actually in, uh, in the uh, plastic itself. So as these wear down, they're still gonna stay the same grit. Um, I found those about a year and a half ago, a year ago, and I absolutely love them. And they come in grits from 80 to 2,500 grit. So I sometimes I'll go to this one, but normally I'll stop right about here. Um, I think this is 1,000 grit. Yeah, I have them marked on my board. 1,000 grit. Um, but there's basically two types of, or two sizes of shanks that I use. Most of my stuff is the 3 16th shank and then there's the regular dremel size i think it's um quarter inch I'm not real sure but uh the, the two main sizes and i'll use because i started out with this nail uh drill fought rotary tool um it's in 330 seconds so that's what i got all of my bits for to start uh, I've got different diamond bits. Um, this was a set of 30, I think. Um, and then I have them in the regular Dremel size as well in a couple different sets. They're basically the same thing, just the different size shank. And it's always good to have extras in case you uh, grind them down too far. Um, every once in a while, you'll get stuff caught in them. Let's see if I can get that to focus there. Um, no, it's not going to focus. There we go. Uh, every once in a while you get a spot that you just kind of wear down and it won't really work real well. Um, I have my diamond cutoff wheel. I'll use this to take down some of the rough edges or take off some flashing on some bigger pieces. Sorry about the shakiness of the camera. Um, have my little buffing pads here. Um, these come in different sizes and different uh, softness as, as it is. Most of these are felt. This is felt and then I do have a couple of buffing pads I'll use with the uh, polishing compound. Mostly what I use is uh, the red and the black. That's all I had to start with. So I use my black on a stiffer um, polishing wheel, and then I'll use my, my red on this softer buffing wheel. Um, it's probably overkill, but that's all I had. I didn't have a, a uh, tumbler or anything to polish, so this is what I finished up with. Now I have the white, and I'll use that on um, some of my my new buffing pads, like this one, really puts a real high shine on them. 
Um, so some of the other things that you can get are the stone uh, bits. And I don't really use those very often. Uh, most of it's been for stuff that's not jewelry. I stick, I stick with the, the wheels a lot now. They just do such a, a nice job. Um, there's different attachments. You got all kinds of wheels and things. Little buffing brushes. I think I just got this one from Suzanne. It's one of the infused ones, but it's on the Dremel size bit. So I haven't really used it yet. Um, like I said, most of what I do, I get done with these wheels now. Um, there's different uh, drill bits. So these are actual bits, but they are tiny, super, super tiny. And I found online, you can get these in both the Dremel size shaft and the 332nd shaft. And basically it's a little chuck that, let's see if I can get to focus, that will hold those tiny little bits. So you can still use your rotary tool to make those little holes for your cutouts and things like that. Um, there's different size and types of shanks. Like some have uh, bigger um, reinforced heads. I really like these little guys here. They allow me to get in really close and I have just about all of my wheels set up on those guys. I can get into real tight spots and I have to worry about the head touching and making marks on my pieces. Um, let's see, what else do we got? Um, got those, got those, the diamond bits. Um, my rotary tool, this guy here, let me just make sure that that's closed. Sorry, it's one-handed. So, there we go. So this guy, I can turn, I can reverse it, which is nice because sometimes I need to, my bit keeps rotating over the item. So I'll change it, change it back and it allow me to get there. I can change speeds really low and then it'd go up to an eight. Normally for most of my grinding, I'll keep it to, say I'm finishing something, I'll keep it to a four or a five, and it does a great job. I've had this drill um, for four and a half years, and I changed the handpiece once. And I think this handpiece was like $20. The first setup, I think it was like 55 or so. And then this, uh, this cradle, I just super glued it to the top and I actually take this with me to a lot of shows. I have a, a uh, inverter that hooks up to a battery and I can run this on it. So any little buffing or touch-ups I need to do to um, a piece, I can. If there's a little burr mark from adjusting the rings, I can take and just bring that out and buff it right off so there's no, no problems with that. Um, had this fork out it has these grooves in it but there's something in there so what I what I can do is take one of these little brushes and that will get down in that tiny little groove so I don't have to take off a bunch of the silver in polishing to try and buff down into that I can use these little these little wheels and they fit right in there and I can just get those spots and then of course I'll toss, toss it in the tumbler for all the finish work. One of the things that I really wanted was I wanted this little Fordham handpiece. I think this is a generic handpiece. Um, it comes, it looks just like this on eBay. I took and flipped um, Again, everything's one-handed, sorry. I flipped this up so that I can just do my thumb and it opens right up. Let's see. Opens right up and then I can flip it. But this allows me to get in really, really tight 
to um, my pieces. And a lot of times with the other hand piece, so I can get right, right in here just like pencil work. And I don't have to worry about, this is the one that my big rotary tool came with. And let's see, it is JE300. Um, it has a ton of power, especially compared to this thing. But what I did was whenever I bought it, it came with this handpiece and this uh, cable. And at the same time, I bought this handpiece because I didn't know that the ends were actually different. So the end for, for this one is actually a square the tube or the uh, this part is actually just squared off and for the Fordham let me get some of this stuff moved out of here okay for the Fordham the end looks like this and it has a little key piece on it. Let's see if I can get that to adjust. There we go. It has this little key on it where the other one just has that squared wire. So what I had to do was find this cable and I, I bought it hoping that I could attach it to the shaft on here and what I found out was the answer to that question oh, dropped it is yes because it has this little end attachment and it fits right on there and there's a, a little screw that you can just screw down and this one has the attachment end and what I did was actually this little set screw here actually fits inside the one I bought to fit the, the, the uh, little hand piece. And this smaller hand piece is a 332nd, whereas this one here will go down super, super small. But you have those teeth and you can't get real up tight to your work. I ground my finger a few times trying to get in tight. So, but what I did was I hooked this up and then I was able to use the small hand piece. And I think this piece, this cable cost me 20 to $25, I think. And now basically I have two cables. The only thing that I had to switch over is this little black piece up here. It actually, um, came with this set, but I had to take it off. And I always keep my tools mag stuck to a magnet, otherwise I lose everything. And this just comes undone. And slides right off. And then it will slide onto this piece and I can switch them out. It takes maybe three minutes to change this up. So if I want to use my bigger, uh, my bigger shanked pieces, it just takes me a couple minutes to switch them out. Um, and it, uh, I don't have my daughter here today to help me. Um, this also, um, this guy's ran with a foot pedal. Sorry, it's kind of a mess under here, but the foot pedal adjusts the speed. And you can get it as low.
it takes a little bit to get used to, but it has a ton of torque and power. The nice part about this one is I can keep it at a set speed and then I just, I can adjust it wherever I, I need it to go. So if I need a little bit more power, a little bit more speed, I can, it's a constant speed, which is really nice to have. Kind of the same thing with the Dremel. I do have my small Dremel up here. Um, and then I have this little guy down here. This was my first Dremel. I think it was $9.99 from Harbor Freight or something. I keep one little drill bit in here, not drill bit, um, one little diamond bit. I use this to clean out the holes after I've taken out the, the uh, flashing. I'll run that through there just to make sure my holes are all straight and it makes it easier to wire. And you know there's nothing in there to grab and cut the wire for the bracelets and things like that. Um, let's see, so we covered this guy, covered my big one. The ones from Fordham, super powerful. There's a lot of different kinds. Let me switch this around. There's a lot of different um, sizes and powers and tons of the hand pieces that, that you can use. But it takes that, that one cable that has the little key on it. Um, let's see. And there's tons of ways to store your bits. Uh, I've seen the rotary tables. I've seen um, the little stacked up blocks. Um, but just keeping the normal stuff handy, the stuff that you use all the time, you really want to um, keep close. And like I said, most of what I use is this batch right here, these guys. I'll use these for my holes, uh, for sanding down the little pieces, like on my dogs, getting in those tiny little spots to kind of clean them up. Uh, this is my punch, my center punch. It's actually, um, I don't have one of the little spring punches. I had one and it kept dulling on me and I finally uh, kept sharpening it until it it died so I use this bigger center punch and I just keep sanding it down with my with my drum here <laughs> and it works great it's got a nice sharp point on it so it catches um, but that's kind of how my setup is this is a one horsepower <laughs> buffer grinder I took and cut off actually part of the shank off of this so that my my shanks with the the bits twisted on here would fit and I could use almost every size um, I think this is a half inch I did put a couple pieces of leather on the front or back because it wanted to kind of slide over and there's two set screws so I covered those up with black tape because sometimes the silverware will will pop off and I didn't want to put marks on it. But that's kind of my setup, and I hope this helps you guys with your, uh, your grinding, buffing, uh, finishing up your pieces. All right, have a good day. Have fun.